Uh, so I'm going to start with one that's just called Fairy Tale. Once there was a girl told by the boys that her walk was wrong, that the cut of her voice was mine shaft deep, and her mouth was a scar in the crack of a stone in the black belly of earth. She sucked in her breath, held it deep in her lungs like a tune that had been whistling for millennia. An old song known by the earth, hummed by lost boys and girls who walked like they were lost boys. She was born lonely, as the moon is lonely. In such a big sky, stretched across such a big earth, that sometimes even the wind forgets which parts it's blown across. She bit her nails and picked them from her tongue like tiny fish bones. It was winter, after school, the air full of mist and drizzle, and if the sky was the colour of paint with a name, you'd call it Northern Grey. She walked to the harbour, where clouds scurried the sky and masts of moored boats clanked together in badly rhythmed time, their sound snatched like that of broken-skinned bells. Here was where all the words for darkness had hidden themselves. She noticed how the harbour wall tilted towards the sea so the waves wouldn't wash over. This was a place where men had smuggled in rum and women had sold from themselves their selves. The sea, so bored with the pattern and pitch of its own waves, year after year, tide after tide, was unusually flat. And in the distance, one white street lamp was trying its best to come on, something tinkering with the mist trying to tune itself in on a picture not quite right. And there, under the street lamp, gold stirred in one ear, smoking a cheap cigarette, was a wolf, an old wolf, a wolf in love's clothing. Now wolves, as wolves go, can be charming. And this one saw her coming, stubbed out his cigarette, Slicked back his hair, tucked in his tail, in a way that said, this is the end, and just the beginning. Strange, you should be here, walking, alone. Are you looking for something? The girl, suddenly thrilled and terrified in seven unknown parts of herself, said, nothing. You don't walk like the other girls. No. And you don't have a voice like the other girls. But I like it. I like you. I know what you're looking for. I'll give it to you. Now the deal was this. She must meet the wolf midday each, at noon each day in the woods and bring with her the body of a girl not touched by another. In exchange, he'd take his clothes and say, this is what love feels like. Touch her. And though she tried not to look when he ate to the bone of the girls, so quick, so ravenous, sorry, said the wolf, but I'm starving. And in some ways, he was. Did I tell you, this was a small town in the north, where tongues stretch to fetch far rumours from the air, like the gossip of fat frogs who don't leave ponds. Nothing gets out, nothing gets in. And as the days wore on and the grass grew thin, somebody saw her somewhere where she shouldn't have been. Somebody noticed all the girls of her going missing. Look a secret straight in the eye and it will come out. Like sheep that have been penned in too long, words will leap over one another, desperate to be heard. The world unravels. The truth stands unfleeced. Now the men of her family, on learning about the wolf, wanted to follow him in a gang that she wouldn't have been allowed to be part of. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, and for the body of a girl, well, 
The Bible doesn't say, but I imagine it is fists and boots. I imagine it is black eyes and the wrath of the father and the holding of shoulders by cousins and uncles and the sound of a fist against a jaw, which is almost duller and slacker than you might expect, and a kick and a kick, and that would have been that. The wolf put to bed, banged to rights, the dust of a scuffle under a rug. But the women, the women of her family were different. See, they felt it as a pain in their wounds, stretching back to the beginning like knowledge. The women would have tucked the wolf, strung him from the nearest tree, and while he writhed, they would have pointed at the wolf while looking at the girl and said, that is a wolf. How did you not know? Who goes to meet the wolf, let alone in the woods? It was Red Riding Hood not red enough? for you. The truth is, nothing happened. It never does. Small towns, years pass. The wolf did what wolves do. Prowled the primitive fence, sniffed at the grass, lifted a paw as he thought about coming back. And then left. He got married, I heard. Second time around. Cashed in his pension, moved to Spain. Less rain. And the girl, well, she's not a girl anymore. She keeps moving, town to town, house to house. Can't seem to settle. Keeps telling this story about a wolf and a harbour wall and how clothes can be deceiving. After all these years, she's still trying to do the explaining. <laughs>